The COVID-19 pandemic affects the turnout of some 300,000 tomato cultivators in the country, excesses in production and supply, difficulties delivering their stock. Government explores ways to tackle the interruption. A 135 million Seve France COVID-19 isolation unit is inaugurated in a Bolova by Public Health Minister Dr. Manawudu Malachi, a depiction of the state's willingness to provide health care to local communities. A seasoned politician, pioneer female minister in Cameroon and member of the Electoral Board of Elections Cameroon, Delphine Changa, bows out a profile of the assiduous and motivated woman plus testimonies of the writer in this newscast. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Those were our headlines. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. The government of Cameroon has its attention drawn on the disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic on the tomato subsector. The subject was amongst the issues examined during the interministerial meeting to monitor the state's response strategy against the pandemic. The online session chaired by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute yesterday probed into the scope of the phenomenon and explored ways of tackling it. Christian Chiatam revisits the deliberations. The situation along Cameroon's borders was the focus of Thursday's interministerial meeting. However, the crisis hitting the tomato subsector caused the topic to be brought up for examination. Tomato mobilizes about 330,000 small-scale and organized producers in Cameroon. It is one of the rare crops which the country exports more than it imports. But there has been big trouble for tomato farmers of recent. The COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting closure of borders has blocked access to foreign markets such as Chad, Nigeria, the Central African Republic, and Gabon. The situation has led many farmers to sell at giveaway prices, and even more have been unable to repay their debts. In the course of last Thursday's interministerial meeting, chaired by Prime Minister Joseph John Gute, the Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development and his counterpart of trade proposed a recovery plan for the sector if the current crisis continues. Gabriel Mbairobi and Luc Magloan Baruga Atangana proposed the restructuring of the subsector, support to farmers through inputs such as fertilizer, seeds, and pesticides, and the rehabilitation of old transformation lines or the creation of new ones. The two ministers are, however, hopeful that the current crisis hitting the subsector will not persist. They say the imminent reopening of international borders means that producers will soon have access to foreign markets again. Members of the Parliamentary Network for the Promotion of Private Entrepreneurship have pledged to support small-scale ventures in their communities in order to roll back poverty. They were meeting today in Yaoundé during an exchange where the network's plan of action for 2020-2021 presented by Honourable Roger Melingi was adopted. Details in this report. Entrepreneurship is undoubtedly a great source of job creation for the youth, whom lawmakers suggest must be accompanied as they design, launch and run their businesses. The president of the Network for the Promotion of Entrepreneurship, Honorable Roger Melingi, opines that increased access to entrepreneurial education and financing spelled out in their 2020-2021 blueprints will improve on the country's enterprising ecosystem. We have as one of our objectives to get the youths out from the informal sector where they can be legalized to build up the capacity of these youth and expose them to these various sectors that they can get financing in order to make them develop and more competitive. In their different constituencies, the legislators of the network pledge to chaperone startups and to certify that they stay in business. We're going to identify actors intervening in entrepreneurship, available projects, and select them according to their levels of maturity. 
The ensuing assistance will enable the development of new markets and the creation of wealth for higher earnings and a better national income. The promotion of entrepreneurial skills to curb the rise in unemployment among youth has also been highlighted by the Minister of Employment and Vocational Training. Isa Chiruma Bakari made the accession during a tour to Lake Division where an evaluation of the Vocational Training Center of Ibadda was given. Gilbert Ongene has details of the working visit. This is the institute whose success the minister holds should be emulated by others. It has a student body that numbers more than 1,000 and has this giant farm for practical lessons. I'm here to study uh, vegetable production. After my formation, I want to create an enterprise of transformation of banana. Some 20 years ago, it had just three trainees. Today, it numbers more than 1,000. This is the backbone, the milestone for development of the nation. I say that... Uh, the humanity today and tomorrow will be in need of food, of water, and clean air. Obala is the example that when there is will, there is way. From Obala with joy, Minister Isa Chiroma arrived with a twinge of sadness here at the Ebebda Vocational Training Center, which is being built with funds from the French Dead Relief and Development Project, C2D. It is a cheap labor. It is unacceptable. Next week, with my collaborator, I will summon all the national expertise to lead a thorough investigation. He has emphasized government would encourage Cameroonians to produce most of what they eat and to consume what comes from their agro-pastoral endeavors. Still on development news, construction works on projects earmarked in the East region under the French Debt Relief Development Contract, C2D, are advancing satisfactorily in spite of the late start. The Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Celestine Kechakoutas, in the company of the French Ambassador to Cameroon, His Excellency Christophe Guillou, inspected the projects. The case to the newly constructed low-cost houses was also handed over to the Minister, as seen to Saptala reports. The projects visited in Betwa included road construction works along the Monu neighborhood and rehabilitation works on other access routes. The road was unusable. We used to carry mud with our hands in order to build this bridge. But thanks to the government, we will have a road year. Together with the French ambassador, the Minister of Housing inspected those projects within the C2D contract aimed at boosting regional development and ameliorating the lives of the population. The work is in progress. Most of the infrastructure will, will be completed in the next month, hopefully. During the tour, the minister was content with a progress of about 61% since works began in 2019. She was also handed the keys of social housing units, which include a school, health center, and supermarkets. I'm very happy that we achieved with the low-cost housing and that we gave the keys to honors, health ministry, basic education ministry, as well as sick. With all constructions expected to be complete by 2021, the population led by its elites expressed their satisfaction at this general revamping of the region. I'm sure that in, let us say, four or six months, this city will be one of the best in our country. Within the framework of the debt reduction development contract, the French agency, AFD, continues to contribute in developing community-based social services like these. As announced in one of our top stories, the Ebolova COVID-19 isolation unit constructed to the tune of 135 million CV friends is now open to patients. While inaugurating the structure, the Minister of Public Health, Dr. Mana Wudo Malashi, reiterated government's commitment to stall the spread of the contagious virus in the country. A visit was also made to the Ebolova Referral Hospital under construction, which is 95% complete. Bernice Atabong tells us more. A CURT that officially opens the COVID-19 isolation unit of the Ebolova Regional Hospital. The center, with 24 rooms equipped with oxygen concentrators, offices and modern equipment, will be used to take care of coronavirus patients. 
the unit has been built on 500 square meters of land and it costs about 135 million CFA francs. The building comes in handy at a time when the South region has recorded 543 coronavirus cases, with Abolova being the epicenter of the disease with 217 cases. This is a, a high uh, instruction of the head of state to construct uh, uh, isolation uh, unit uh, in each of the uh, region, uh, region of Cameroon. While inaugurating the unit, Minister Manawuda Malashi encouraged health personnel of the South who have been putting their lives on the line to help the population. So far, more than 300 persons in the region have recovered from COVID-19. The minister, who also used his visit to Abolova to sensitize the population on the need to respect COVID-19 barrier measures, also visited the Ebolova Referral Hospital, which is about 95% complete. This health facility, when operational, will help upgrade healthcare services in the South region. From the South region to the littoral, the Douala City Council is championing sensitization campaigns to flatten the curve of COVID-19 infections in the town. It is organizing free coronavirus screening for the council personnel and educating the population on the very essence of getting tested in the COVID-19 specialized centers in the five council areas of Douala. Laris Nana Epote has the details. Leading by example is what the Douala City Mayor Roger Mbasadine and other mayors in the various municipalities in the Vuri have done this Thursday in Douala by getting themselves and their personnel tested for the COVID-19 virus by the team from the Ministry of Public Health. This exercise was preceded by a COVID-19 caravan to educate the public on the need to get to the nearest center put up in each municipality for free COVID-19 screening. The caravan made several stops at major runabouts like that of Bonasama Bonaberry in the Douala 4 municipality where the city mayor and his team equally took time to educate passers-by on why they need to be watchful of their health for they have to learn how to live with the COVID-19 pandemic. Similar exercise were led by the mayors of the other municipalities like that of the Douala 3 at the Ndokoti runabout. Face masks were also also distributed to the population to demonstrate the concern by the city council towards the community, encouraging them to once again take up the habit of protecting themselves in public places. Traditional rulers are also helping their people to combat the coronavirus by providing them with protective gears. In great support, Boya, His Royal Highness Etina Monono called on the inhabitants to judiciously use the items and to respect all the barrier measures ordered by government. Annabel Ndike Enwanyang has the details. <laughs> The gift that comprised 1,000 face masks and 400 hand sanitizers comes to reinforce the fight against the ravaging pandemic among the population of great support. They should continue to wash their hands, use sanitizers, keep social distance, and above all, everybody must wear a mask. It has been proven that if you do these measures which have been given by the government, the percentage of people will be suffering from COVID-19 reduces greatly. While receiving the gift, the beneficiaries saluted the kind gesture which they say it's timely. These things will go a long way to help us. Feel very happy and uh, we are praying that more of this should come from other hands. I'm overwhelmed. It is really going to help us because this pandemic, the way we see it has come to stay, so we must fight it. The donation ceremony was also an occasion for the population to be scored on the respect of COVID-19 measures put in place by the government. However, the population of great support is now armed to bring on board your contribution in the fight against the coronavirus. The wearing of face masks in public places will be mandatory until further notice.
On to politics. The Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation is providing a recital of projects carried out and those envisaged for the common will of the population. At the press dinner organized in Yaoundé, the elected representatives of the party in parliaments and in councils presented the actions and their vision for Cameroon's development. Ebenezer Akanga attended the press dinner and now reports. The press dinner brought together the five members of parliament and seven mayors of the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation, PCRN. The objective was to present to the press men and women what the members of parliament and mayors have realized or are realizing since they were voted into office in February this year. What we want to prove there is that the Cameroon Party for National Reconciliation has received the confidence of people and we are working to deserve this confidence. The members of parliament and mayors took turns to explain what they have done so far to improve on the plight of the population. When you come to the, the council of Zeka, you will see before you will find um, houses built in, in disorder. When you get into the town now, you are going to find um, a really order manner. Of construction. The national president of the PCRN, Cabral Libby, stated the determination of the members of parliament and mayors of his party to deliver on their electoral promises. He launched a fervent appeal to Cameroonians of voting age to register in voters' lists, saying that the PCRN believes in peaceful change and coming to power through elections. In the West region, the national president of one of the country's recently created political parties is touring communities to roll out his ideology. Professor Shani of the Popular Movement for Dialogue and Reconciliation was in Upper Plateau Division today to woo sympathizers. Kelvin Nembo has details of his three-day tour. He has joined politics for a well-defined mission, promote responsible and selfless politicking, especially in his native Baham. The president of the popular movement for dialogue and reconciliation, Professor Shanda Tomne, said during his political tour in the Upper Plateau Division. There's no problem we, we, we cannot solve. We can solve all the problems we are experiencing, actually. The point is, do we really believe in our country do we really believe in order in our country? Let be more responsible. Let build our own country. After explaining his party's ideology to the SDO for the Upper Plateau, Yampen Usmano, and the paramount ruler of Baham, Senator Poka Marx II, he said it is a national movement and all Cameroonians are welcome on board for common good. All of us for dialogue and reconciliation. We have only have one state. We, we do not have two state. The national president of the MPDR party and his delegation will leave for the noon division Friday, where he is expected to meet with Sultan Ibrahim Bombonjoya of the Bamun people for a similar exercise. From the West region, we now take you over to the littoral region where the non-wearing of face masks by some inhabitants of Douala has been strongly reprimanded by the administration. Governor Samuel Dodoné Ivaha Diboa condemned the carefree attitude exposed to the population to the deadly coronavirus during the first semester administrative coordination meeting in Idea. Salih Ebenyanyoke reports that security concerns were also addressed during the coordination meeting. These administrative officials from the four divisions of the littoral region are meeting in Idea for their first semester administrative coordination meeting within the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. Unfortunately, the governor remarked that many people in the region have abandoned the wearing of masks, especially in markets. Their deliberations will therefore center on re-strategizing on how to relaunch sensitization campaigns in public places and markets in the littoral region so that everybody can be involved in limiting the spread of COVID-19. Security concerns in the region are also under scrutiny scrutiny with law enforcement officials. We are going to take uh, the measures to secure even some strategical points of uh, 
our territory. Before the coordination meeting, the governor inaugurated a 1,000 capacity grandstand constructed by elite and councils in Idea under the supervision of the SDO for the Senegal Maritime, Cyril Abondo. He also visited some bridges in Bad State. The Ministry of Public Health is working in line with the decisions taken by governments to multiply screening opportunities. Testing units have been mounted in all entry points of the country and regular checks of commuters are done with the collaboration of transport authorities. Baldwin Summer is at the Public Health Emergency Operations Centre and now updates us on the implementation of these issues and more. Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Esther Kim, and welcome to the Public Health Emergency Operations Center, where government's trouble to limit the spread of COVID-19 in the country continues, and this time it is visible through actions undertaken by the Ministry of Public Health that is trying as much as possible to respect all the recommendations from the Prime Minister, head of government, after yesterday's inter-ministerial uh, cabinet meeting uh, to check government's repose plan against the spread of COVID-19 in the country. And one of such measures that officials of the Ministry of Public Health are looking forward to respecting happens to do with uh, the airport. Uh, the persons, all those who are entering into Cameroon must be tested negative for COVID-19 and any person tested positive for COVID-19 upon arrival in the country must be quarantined and taken care of. And equally, there has to be this systematic uh, check. So for the different vessels at the airport, they must be disinfected on a regular basis. And equally, all the passenger luggages must equally be disinfected on a regular basis upon arrival of the different persons into the country. And talking about what is expected from uh, the Ministry of uh, Public Health and the General Delegation for National Security, they expected to work in synergy to ensure that at the different entry points into Cameroon, the different borders of the country, air or land or sea, uh, security measures are put in place and are respected for all those who are entering into Cameroon and they must equally be tested negative for COVID-19 before any of such persons has access into the country. What is expected from the ministries of public health and that of transport, they are supposed to equally work closely to ensure that all the stakeholders involved in an imminent reopening of Cameroon's borders, they must respect the norms, they must respect the outlined guidelines from the government of the country to ensure that the spread of COVID-19 is limited when these airports will be reopened. And that is why all public health experts are looking forward to having all these recommendations respected in the days and in the weeks ahead to see into to that together was one we stop the spread of COVID-19 in Cameroon. Back to you, Esther Kima. Thanks very much, Baldwin, and we remain confident that the strict implementation of these measures will considerably reduce the number of COVID-19 infections in the country. In other news, workers of the Ministry of Finance have been challenged to transform the huge savings at the Treasury to serve as a contributing factor to Cameroon's emergence. The Minister of Finance, Louis Paul Motaze, made the admonition today while decorating five civil servants of the Ministry as Knights of the National Order of Valor for their exceptional output. Lou Maslim Davis has the details. Here they are. These five civil servants of the Ministry of Finance have been honored exceptionally as Knights of the Order of Valor on the instructions of the President of the Republic, Paul Beer. This year we've been able to mobilize close to 240 billion in the monetary market. And you know, uh, given the present economic and sociopolitical context, it is very challenging. So for us to come up with this kind of amount in these challenging times, I think uh, it shows that our country, despite everything, we are standing strong and firm. Their professional talents, ambition, and the drive for achievements have brought remarkable financial benefits to Cameroon. It's not just about money. It's about building a sustainable financial market, not only for Cameroon, but for the whole of the sub-region. As you may be well aware, the two financial markets in the sub-region have been merged. And if we merge, it means that we have a bigger market, but we also have bigger demands. We're going through very challenging times, and the challenges vary. We have external economic shocks. We have uh, the COVID-19 that came in. Before the COVID-19, we had a uh, lot of other uh, crises around the sub-region. Cameroon satisfactorily executed its first program to the tune of 220 billion CFA francs with interest rates 
largely lower than those of smart countries and other economic bloc countries. The new Secretary General of the Ministry of Social Affairs, Beryl Ikombe Panje, has been commissioned into office. She was installed today by the Minister of Social Affairs, Pauline Irengene, and enjoined to work for the well-being of vulnerable groups and the promotion of social welfare in society. Prior to her appointment, the graduate from the National School of Administration and Magistracy in M was the Southwest Regional Delegate for Women's Empowerment and the Family. The 49-year-old hails from Ekondotiti in the Southwest region. The African Institute of Computer Sciences Cameroon has organized a virtual open day in partnership with l'Ecole Supérieure d'Ingénieurs Numériques et Matériaux of Bourgogne, France. It is an opportunity for the students to be acquainted with programs offered such as the Masters in Digital Programs and Systems. The resident representative of the Institute, Armand Claude Abanda, was at the fore of today's open day as we hear this report by Yoti Kaleli Songe. CT programs presented to students of the African Institute of Computer Sciences, EIE Cameroon, virtually during this 2020 edition of the Open Day, organized by EIE in partnership with l'Ecole Supérieure d'Ingénieurs Numériques et Matériaux of Bougon, France. His Excellency President Paul Biya, in his recent speech, has said that uh, we are forwarding uh, in a digital world. It's very important uh, for public public administration to have uh, this master for our ICT engineer. If Cameroonian ICT students should further their studies in digital systems and security, experts say it would be a plus to the nation considering its digital transformation goal. We need to secure data, network and systems. It's very, very important for our administration. And uh, that uh, Dijon master uh, can give uh, many competence uh, uh, for our ICT engineers. All efforts made to give students more opportunities in the fast evolving digital world, as well as showcase the prowess of EIE Cameroon. On to this sad note, Cameroon's pioneer minister and member of the Electoral Board of Elections Cameroon, Mrs. Delphine Changa, has succumbed to the cold hands of death. The Cameroonian writer and politician died yesterday in Yaoundé. If Formoso now profiles the tenacious woman. A tenacious, persistent and hard-working woman who worked to achieve objectives, words from the lips of colleagues and collaborators. Delphine Changa, member of the Electoral Board of Elections Cameroon, appointed in 2011, is described by the board chair as a peace crusader. For a treating period now, she was a bit sick, but she maintained a lot of tenacity to come to work. I remember I came here on the June 2016 when the, the house was boiling with a lot of crises. And the first thing that she got to me was that, my son, I know you are capable of doing it. And I think if today there's peace in elections can win, also because of the way she kept advising us and managing the house. In 1975, she makes history as first ever female minister, minister of social affairs. Her selflessness and fight for gender equality marked collaborators. A mother figure, the Cameroonian writer and politician, charmed her way into the hearts of many who saw her as a role model. She was the one who helped this return to the roots and who uh, persuaded my husband to come and work in Cameroon. She was someone who was respected because she knew her job, she knew what she was doing, she knew what she wanted. At her premises, loved ones remain in number mood, saddened by her disappearance. Out of Cameroon, Gabon has a new prime minister appointed by President Ali Bongo Ndimba in the person of Rose Christian Osuka Raponda, the politician, former mayor of Libreville and the country's defense minister from February 2019 to July 2020, becomes the first female prime minister in the Central African states since independence. Charles Abonet spoke to a political scientist, Dr. Calistus Abon, who explains the task that awaits the new prime minister. Since Ali Bongo took over office in 2009, he has struggled to maintain a certain romance with women, just like the father, because as we speak, even the acting president of the Constitutional Council is a woman. We are talking about an economic and finance colossus of a rare breed. 
because after graduating from the Gabonese Institute of Economy and Finance, she occupies various posts of, of responsibility in the government. She has a huge responsibility as an economic expert to see how to uh, increase oil productivity and equally it prices. We know as a woman she should know the periphery of a kitchen because one of the uh, sectors affected by this COVID is the kitchen. Because as a woman, she should be able to establish a cordial relationship between the pot and the mouth because many... That ends this edition of the news. More news will be coming up at 8.30 p.m. with Atta Badinoma. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. God willing, have a beautiful weekend. Good night. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing. Info.